Why buy facial toner when you can make it? Today we're going to talk about how to make your own chamomile, lavender, and apple cider vinegar toner. It's super affordable and your skin will love it. Using vinegar has been around for centuries. It's known that Hippocrates used to use vinegar extractions of herbs and he is considered the father of medicine in the Western world and was around uh, alive during the time of about 460 BC. So it's been used for millennia for um, not only internal um, issues going on with people, but external. Vinegar has a lot of really fabulous components that are great, um, lots of nutrients and minerals as well that are great internally, but today we're gonna focus on the external and that DIY facial toner we talked about. So I just want to clarify too, when I talk about vinegar, especially here, and I mentioned it in the intro, I am talking about this stuff. So the apple cider vinegar, this is the brand that I like the most, um, Bragg's Raw Apple Cider Vinegar. And you can see that it has the mother tincture, which is all this lovely cloudy stuff on the bottom. So those are the really great probiotics and cultures that have grown in here. Um, and I specifically love it for facial toners because we get this lovely natural flora from the uh, from the vinegar placed back onto our skin which is fantastic among all the other benefits of um, of the vinegar so yeah so vinegar I'm not talking about white vinegar or super concentrated acetic acid which I think most people think about when they think about like an acne spot treatment um, and that's way more concentrated than what's actually in this vinegar it's only about 5% acetic acid and that's not even the best component of it and why we like it for skin stuff um, so yeah, I really recommend the, the Bragg's Raw Apple Cider Vinegar um, to get all of these wonderful nutrient-dense components as well as the lovely um, probiotics that are in the bottom there. And I did just do a video on probiotics. If you guys want to check it out, I'll put it in the notes here for this video. Also, a quick note, if you want to jump right to how I made this, um, you can also look in the description down below and I'll have a little link there so you can jump ahead in the video if you'd rather skip all the all of this good stuff or go back and forth, you know, see how it's made, come listen to this part, whatever you want to do, totally fine. So yeah, looking at the vinegar and skin, specifically vinegar and skin health benefits here. So alpha hydroxy acids are a big one for skin health. Um, there's been a lot of research come out on them recently and you can even see um, skin uh, products that are specifically geared towards, they say, they say alpha hydroxy acids on them. That's kind of the main component they're uh, promoting, which it seems to rotate a lot with skincare products, right? There's argan oil and then there's chamomile and then there's whatever the newest cool thing is. Um, so alpha hydroxy acids are fantastic. Um, the one that you mainly find in apple cider vinegar is from malic acid, which is from apples, right? Because apple cider vinegar is really just fermented apples. That's all it is. So, and that's why it does count as a fermented food, which I mentioned in my probiotic video, um, which is really where you want to start to rebuild your own natural flora, both, you know, on your skin and in your GI. And the GI, you know, it reflects, the GI mirrors the skin. So if you've got issues on the skin, Usually there's something internal going on. Little bonus tip for today. <laughs> but um, yeah, so oftentimes treating the GI can help quite a bit and that's why fermented foods and products are so wonderful um, for the skin as well. You can, topically is great, but really what's going on internally is, is super important too. Um, and needs a little bit of help there if you're noticing if you're noticing di difficulties. So um, Why are these alpha hydroxy acids so amazing? So first they are an exfoliant so they literally Break up the bond between dead skin cells so they're able to be washed away more easily Which is pretty cool, right? Which we definitely want um, in our facial toner um, and then they will increase collagen and elastin production, which is amazing, right? That is what we really need in our face if we're concerned about getting wrinkles or we've had a lot of sun damage, um, that it kind of breaks down the collagen over time. Collagen will decrease in the connective tissue and skin as we age to begin with. So anything that we can do to kind of increase that is going to minimize the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines. So apple cider vinegar, fabulous stuff for that. Um, and then we're also looking at decreasing age spots and scars with this apple cider vinegar, which is really neat, from the alpha hydroxy acids. All of this has come out in a recent 
um, PubMed article, which I thought was really cool. So there's a lot of really fabulous stuff that just uh, that the alpha hydroxy acids do for your skin. And of course, apple cider vinegar is a very natural way to get it. I love that it's complexed with everything else that's going on in there with other nutrients and minerals, probiotics. It, it's not just a, a chemical component that somebody's decided, wow, this is helpful for the skin. I'm gonna strip it out of its natural place, put it in this cream that has all this weird stabilizing stuff in it um, and hope that it works for people. Um, I think doing it, getting it the natural way is a much, much better way um, for it to work for you um, and you'll get better results. So um, yeah, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about the, uh, the pH of the vinegar overall, right? So the pH of the vinegar is about three. So um, it's on a scale of zero um, or one to 14 and uh, the, the closer you get to zero is more acidic and then the higher, the closer you get to 14 is more basic. So the idea with a facial toner is that it balances out what happens after we put um, soap on our skin. So, and there's a lot of information out there nowadays too that maybe soap isn't the best way to clean your skin, where oil cleansing is really fabulous. If you haven't heard of that, I would totally check it out. Great, even if you have oily skin, um, there's different oils that you can use, but it's a really nice natural way to, to cleanse things without disrupting the bacterial balance on your skin. Of course, that's super important. So when we get that bacterial balance disrupted, that's when we get overgrowth of things and we get clogged pores or we get acne, we get infections, that type of thing. So the more we can keep um, that great probiotic content um, or natural flora content in check on the skin where the good guys are growing high and they're kind of crowding out the bad guys, um, the better it's gonna be for overall skin health. So soap usually has a pH of about eight or nine, and our normal skin pH is at about five. So you can see that, that when we move towards, when we do soap, we, we've decreased the pH, I'm um, sorry, we've increased the pH of our skin. Um, and usually pathogenic bacteria prefer a more alkaline environment. So that's when they're able to overgrow. So it's essentially almost like using an antibiotic on your skin with some soap. Um, I'm not usually a big fan of using lots of lots and lots of soap um, in general on the skin. So um, because it's harsh and it strips, not only does it mess with the bacteria, it strips all of our natural oils, which can be a really big component of having an issue with oily skin, where if we're stripping it all down in this natural kind of sebum coat that keeps our skin healthy and keeps those bacteria um, flourishing, the good ones, if we're stripping that off, then we're allowing bad, um, bad organisms to grow, right, the bad bacteria, and then also, um, yeah, we're just, we're, uh, wow, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> and then we're also increasing oil production, right, because if we're stripping it all down, our skin is like, oh my gosh, I don't have this protective coat anymore, and now I need to overproduce it. So then that, that is a contributing factor with oily skin, as well as diet, of course, and overall health. So it's really important to, yeah, to maybe minimize that soap use. Um, and the toner will help to bring your pH back to normal. Um, but again, not a, not a huge fan of, of the really scrubbing, scrubbing off the, um, yeah, the face uh, with, with a harsh soap, especially. Um, so, yep, so the toner will help to bring the pH back to normal. The toner is also astringent. I think this is kind of the main quality that people know about the toner. Um, right, I think one that we can all uh, have, we've had experience with too is, is witch hazel. It's very, very astringent. It will pull the life out of your skin. <laughs> I don't necessarily recommend witch hazel as a great toner. To work, it doesn't have to be harsh. You know, we kind of think, you know, more is better. Oh man, if I really feel it and it's pulling and it's drying, it's really working. You know, I, that's true. But I also think that, you know, that can be really helpful for people with oily skin. But what about people with dry skin? Um, you know, sometimes toners really aren't very customizable or individualized. It's kind of like a one size fits all. Whereas with this recipe, we're gonna dive into how to customize it to your skin type, which is really wonderful. Um, so you're not gonna have, if you've got dry skin already, that really dry, intense, strong herb. Vinegar is kind of a nice uh, middle ground where it is a little astringent. It's gonna kind of pull out some extra moisture. It actually helps to decrease the size of your pores as well, if you're concerned about that. Um, you will, you'll notice it less and less the more that you, you use the facial toner. 
Um, and the astringent is, is really lovely. It's very anti-inflammatory. Vinegar has been used as a compress um, for headaches, but also for fever because it actually reduces um, the feeling of, of heat on the skin. So it's really nice and cooling um, and soothing that way. And again, it's a much more mild um, astringent than something like witch hazel. Um, and then we've also got antiseptic properties of vinegar, right? So it's wonderful in that, yeah, it keeps that pH to a better, um, to a better uh, spot. So then that pathogenic bacteria does not overgrow and the good stuff is able to flourish. You know, th there's not a lot of research on, well, does it spare the good guys or does it just hurt the bad guys? Eh, we don't actually know, but <laughs> I think that overall, we know that the vinegar, the apple cider vinegar especially is wonderful for skin health. So um, my, yeah, I would guess that it's really helping those good guys grow, especially with the good probiotics in it and counteracting the growth of the bad guys. Again, the growth of bacteria anywhere in your body, your GI, your skin, it's all about real estate. You know, you've got the good guys and the bad guys and it's all about who has the balance at that time. You know, with the good guys growing up and they're taking up more space than the bad guys, the skin stays healthy. If the bad guys overgrow, you end up having issues with skin health, with oiliness or acne, um, eczema, psoriasis, things like that. So um, yeah, so that's kind of a nice overview of why vinegar is so great. And then facial toner in general, um, you know, it's a nice thing to add to your skincare routine. Um, you know, as we talked about, it'll help balance the pH after soap. It'll help balance the pH of your skin anyway. Um, and again, this is a fully customizable recipe for you to see what type of, uh, what skin type matches the best with which recipe for you, which we'll get to in a second here. So let's move on to talking a little bit more about the herbs themselves that I chose, right? Why did I choose these? I think we've heard a lot about lavender and chamomile in general for skin products, um, but they share a lot of the same qualities that I really, really like um, in terms of helping the skin out. So these uh, properties not only apply to the skin, but also internally, which is why I love them. So lavender, I've got a little sample here so we can see the dried lavender buds um, as well. And then chamomile. This is, oop, this is what dried chamomile looks like, these little tiny, um, tiny lovely flower buds here. And uh, they smell really good right here. <laughs> it's nice, I get a little nervous during the video sometimes, so now I've got some very calming and soothing herbs right in front of my face. So, um, calming to the GI nerves right there. So yeah, so lavender and chamomile are both anti-inflammatory. Lavender is especially amazing for burns, sunburns, um, bug bites, uh, bee stings, anything like that. It can really, really take down the skin irritation very quickly. Chamomile is similar as well. Um, maybe not quite as well researched in, in those specific applications, but it's wonderful. Very, very soothing. Um, so of course, if we've got some acne going on, the, the herbs are really going to help bring down the inflammation there. Um, and then both herbs are antiseptic, which I think we don't really think about with lavender and chamomile, but they are pretty potent in terms of um, their antimicrobial activity. And again, really bringing down that pathogenic bacteria so the good guys can grow, which really important again for, for great skin health. Um, and just a little note about chamomile. Some people are sensitive to chamomile. It is part of the Asteraceae family. Um, which is a really large family of, of plants. But just good to know that if you know you're sensitive to asters or asteraceae, maybe skip the chamomile in this, um, in this recipe. So the lavender itself will do wonders. It's really lovely and soothing. So again, lavender chamomile soothing to the GI and nerves. So it'll be really nice just applying this to your face a couple times a day. Usually morning and night is a nice way to go. Um, but it's going to be soothing to breathe in the chamomile and lavender that have been extracted um, in the vinegar. And again, remember we talked about whatever is usually good for the GI is good for the skin. So we're kind of reflecting that back by using these herbs on our skin as well. And then both are also antispasmodic. So how does that relate to the skin? Well, <laughs> What's important, I think, to think about there is if they're relaxing overall, is that if we've got really tight facial muscles or we tend to, to 
hold our face in a specific pattern and then create wrinkles and fine lines, that type of thing. These herbs can actually help to relax those muscles, which is fantastic. And the vinegar is very high in potassium, which is also a really important component for um, proper muscle contraction and relaxation. So with these herbs, um, yeah, they can help to relax those facial muscles really nicely. And then if you're having one of those annoying like facial tick kind of things, definitely try some of this facial toner. It would be a great thing to add into your routine. Usually when you have like a kind of a, a facial tick that happens, you know, like the corner of your mouth pulls or your eye twitches, that type of thing, um, that has to do with a mineral deficiency. So these herbs are very rich in minerals, the vinegar is rich in minerals, and then the herbs themselves actually calm the nervous system and calm the nerves, and that is going to apply to the nerves in your face. So uh, yeah, just a nice little extra <laughs> bonus if you, if you have that annoying twitch kind of start to happen. So, okay, lavender and chamomile, let's move on to how to actually make this stuff. So you can see I messed up a little bit there, sorry about that. Hopefully it's pretty clear to read. Um, it's really, really straightforward, and that's why I love this recipe, is that you don't have to be a scientist, you don't have to be a chemist, it's really um, easy proportions to work with, um, and it's, it's super simple. I mean, it probably takes about 10 minutes total to make it, um, five minutes up front, five minutes on the back end, that's it. Um, and again, at the end of this video, I will walk you through exactly how to do that. Here, I just wanted to give you a little quick overview of how it works. So, um, you literally just add the vinegar and herbs together. And you notice I haven't put any quantities on here, right? So again, it's really, it's not super scientific. That's why I love this method. Um, I'll show you exactly how to do it before, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I did not measure my quantities. I have rough estimates and that is just fine. If you wanna get really scientific about it, that's that's great, um, but you don't have to to make, this, um, to make this work for you. And I, so, so we can see that we um, shake daily for 10 to 14 days. Um, so what I think is really interesting about this is, is uh, you know, we're extracting the herbs in the vinegar, um, which most recipes that you see online have you make a tea um, with water and then you add the water to the vinegar, which we are going to do a little bit here um, as well. But I think it's great to do the herbs directly into the vinegar because you're getting, you're getting a higher concentration um, there because the vinegar is a lot less um, than, than making a cup of tea a lot of the time. And you'll see on our next sheet that it depends on your skin type how much water you add. So if you're only adding a little bit of water, you're not getting as much of the herb in there as you would when you're extracting in vinegar. And usually when you're extracting in vinegar, you do want to use a dried herb, just because vinegar is not quite as good a preservative as alcohol. Alcohol you can use fresh plants um, and tinctures that way, and it's gonna really keep everything clean and it would be very um, unlikely for something to mold or spoil. Vinegar is just not quite as intense as alcohol, um, so things can kind of mold and spoil perhaps. That's why I have these dried lavender and the dried chamomile. And um, also remember that dried and, and um, fresh are different in terms of potency. So the dried is usually about three times as concentrated as the fresh because the fresh still has all of its water content in there. So if you are using fresh herbs, just make sure to look at that. And there's actually a different procedure for that too. Um, I have a favorite book that teaches you how to make kind of some of these herbal compounds that I will link to in the description for you. So I'm specifically using dried here, which I would recommend. It's easier than the fresh just starting out. Um, and you can get these herbs at uh, mountainroseherbs.com. I was able to get both of these just at my local grocery store. I have a great natural grocery store um, in their bulk herb section. So, um, and I'll put the link to Mountain Rose down at the bottom for you as well. They have great um, organic herbs that are pretty affordable. So yeah, that's all you're doing. You're just picking it up and shaking it for 10 to 14 days. That's it. I mean, not the whole time, right? <laughs> Once in a while, throughout the day, just pick it up and shake it, that's all. You're just kind of moving the herb around in there, making sure it's fully coated and that all of it is getting extracted the way it can. Then you're gonna strain it off, um, which is super simple. And then, um, you know, you wanna pour it into a clean container. Um, and specifically, the containers I use do not have um, metal because vinegar is acidic, right? And it will eat through the metal. So like a ball jar, I would use a plastic cap. Um, I would not recommend using plastic at all for these because plastic um, can get eaten away by 
acidic stuff and vinegar is acidic. So you really don't want your nice homemade facial toner to have a bunch of plastic crap in it. Um, you know, which, <laughs> you know, we're trying to make this as clean as possible. And a lot of store-bought toners too, they have a lot of weird stuff in it, a lot of dyes and hydrogenated oils even, and um, uh, weird preservatives, that type of thing. And, and again, when you put that stuff on your skin, you're having to detoxify it all out. So um, really just making your facial and skincare products as clean as possible is gonna do your skin a great service because then it's not having to get rid of all of the crap and figure out what it can use just out of that little component that, that might not be crap in the facial toner. So, um, and, and soap and makeup and all kinds of things. Um, and then right, we're gonna dilute it as desired as our last step here. And I'll show you this handy little chart shows you based on, oops, sorry, based on your skin type, this is about the dilution that you want to go for. So for sensitive skin, we're going to use a little bit less vinegar and more water. So these are just parts. Again, it doesn't have to be a specific quantity, but you know, maybe you've got a quarter cup of vinegar that you've made. Um, so then you would use that to, you know, one cup of water. Um, and then for normal to dry skin, we're going with about a two to one ratio. And then for oily skin, we're gonna have the highest component of vinegar because you need a little bit more of that astringent component to really take some of the, the extra oil off the top um, as a one to one. So again, the toners, it's just a really nice, lovely, um, easy thing to make and to do for yourself and save yourself some money. Those facial toners that you can buy in the store that are no joke and even the nice ones can be full of a lot of different weird things that are completely unnecessary and detrimental to skin health um, so and again with oily or sensitive or dry skin it you know the toner is going to help but it really is about that internal environment and diet and lifestyle to look at those larger things but really lovely to do for yourself overall okay all right so i am going to show you how to make this Okay, we're here in my kitchen with everything we need to make this lovely apple cider vinegar, lavender, and chamomile facial toner. Let me just run you through what I've got here. Most of it's pretty explanatory, but I especially wanted to highlight this jar so we can see that it's all glass and it's got this lovely rubber gasket. Um, on the top here, it's, uh, it's no metal is touching the vinegar or plastic because remember, Plastic can degrade in acidic environments, and apple cider vinegar is certainly acidic. Remember, it's about a pH of 3. Um, and then metal will rust with the acid. So things like ball jars and whatnot, not the best fit. Um, so definitely I would go for a glass jar. And we actually do need two of these. I am using both of mine right now as one for demonstration and one that has been ready for about seven, uh, about 10 days now, actually. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so here's the lavender, right? We can see that lavender and chamomile, not totally equal, but they're each about a quarter of a cup. I'd say the lavender is about um, a quarter, a little bit under a quarter of a cup, and the chamomile is a little bit over a quarter cup here in my little ramekins. Um, so we'll get started, you guys. This is super simple. Let me just show you, right? We're just gonna dump right in here with the lavender, and we're gonna do the same thing with the chamomile, which is super pretty, all these little beautiful flower buds here. And there we go. We can see the lavender and the chamomile both in here. And let me just shake it to kind of even it out a little bit there. And then we are gonna take our vinegar and we're just gonna pour it in. That is about it. So I'm gonna pour here so we can see we've got about half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch line um, right there between the herb and the vinegar. So ideally what we want to have is once all this herb is wet, uh, we want to have a, about a quarter inch um, floating free of the herb. And that's it. That's all you have to do to measure. So you're really just trying to soak the herb, leave a quarter inch free down here. That's it. So let me grab my little spatula here. So I'm going to mix. And we can see that the herb is starting to soak things up, especially those little tiny chamomile flowers. So it takes a little bit for the herb to soak in. 
And what you're going to do here as well, you're going to let it sit for about 12 hours at first, and then you're going to check it and you're going to see how much is absorbed. So if the, if the vinegar is completely absorbed, we need to add more or if you're not up to that quarter inch mark. So this here you can see is still looking pretty dry. There is a little bit more vinegar down there, but that's okay. We're gonna add some more vinegar here actually. I think that was probably a bit light. That's all there is to it. Again, definitely not an exact science. Totally fine that it's not. If you want to get really scientific about it, go for it. Be my guest. And remember as well that these flowers are really going to expand because they're dehydrated. So they will uh, soak this vinegar up and get much bigger. Okay, so here's my two jars. We've got on the left the one that I just mixed. You can see all the vinegar there. I mixed it just a little bit longer with the flowers. Remember, they are going to rehydrate um, and really absorb a lot of liquid, so we're going to have way less vinegar down at the bottom here. Um, and then I just seal it off. And then this is my guy who's been sitting for about uh, 10 days. So you can see the vinegar is, we're at about a quarter an inch. You can see a lot of the sediment from the chamomile flowers down on the bottom there. It's a little bit darker. You can see all the strands because I've shaken it up every day. Um, and that's really all you do, you know, to, to swirl. I just kind of swirl it around like this for a few seconds and then let it sit every day. That's really all the maintenance it is to, there is to it. You can certainly move it a little bit differently if you want. Um, but the point is just to saturate all of those flowers. Okay, let's move on to the straining stage. Okay, so you can see I've got my facial toner ready to strain, and then I just have a little Pyrex cup that's about two cups and uh, my cheesecloth all set up in here. So let's go ahead and pop this guy open. There we go, all right. And we do actually wanna use something as fine as a cheesecloth, especially with chamomile. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and pour this on in here. Because chamomile has all these little tiny flower buds uh, that really, really break down. So in order to really get all that fine particulate out of there, um, it's best to use something really fine. If you don't mind the particulate and it's just going to settle at the bottom, okay, no worries. You know, not a, not a big deal. Um, I just like using a cheesecloth. So, all right, we've got all our herb in here and we're just going to strain it out. Oh my gosh, you guys, it smells so good. So good. I wish you could smell through the camera. We're just gonna squeeze everything here as much as we can to bring out, I don't know what I smell more, the lavender or the chamomile. They're both really, really potent, um, really beautiful. And I have to say too, you know, squeezing this out and getting some of it on my fingers, I can feel that the vinegar, I guess I can say has softened, right? So it's a little bit less harsh. Um, apple cider vinegar isn't too harsh to begin with, but it feels a lot softer and silkier on my skin. So I'm really, really excited about this for the vinegar. Okay. All right, guys, I just have to do a glamour shot. Look at that, look at how pretty it is. It's dark and full of good stuff for your face. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so I've got my storage container cleaned and dried off here. And then we can see that I've made just a little bit less than one and a half cups. So I'm actually going to pour about just about one cup into um, my storage container. I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see where we are here. Perfect. Okay, so we've got one cup in there and then I'm going to do about two cups of water because for me my skin is right at about that dry slash normal area. So here's my two cups of filtered water. Perfect. All right. And that is that. You have a homemade facial toner. Let me just seal this off. Great. Ooh. Full disclosure, guys, I tasted some and it's delicious as well. Side note, I would also really recommend labeling this. I have so many things in my drawers and cupboards that I have not labeled. And then I'm like, what's that? I have no idea. So I would definitely label it and put a date on it somewhere. So you know how old it is, how long it's likely to keep. It's vinegar, it's antimicrobial, it's got antimicrobial herbs in it. It really should keep for a fair amount of time. I would say at least six months or a year. Cause you know, this is a fair amount of facial toner to use. So <laughs> um, yeah, that is, that is that.
Okay, bonus tip time. So I diluted the remaining half a cup back up to about one cup, because again, for me, that normal to sensitive, uh, normal to dry skin is a two to one. If you have sensitive skin, it's a four parts water to one part vinegar. And if you have oily skin, one part water to one part vinegar. So I'm at about that two to one range. So if you need some facial toning on the go, like you work out in the middle of the day, or you go right to work after working out, there's a super cool thing where you can just preload a little glass jar with um, the cotton facial pads, and then you can go ahead and pre-soak them with this stuff. It's pretty awesome. So there we go. We'll just get it soaked that way. You can shake it around too to get it soaked a little bit, but there you go. Facial toning on the go. I'm gonna put my cool little top on here so it's all sealed. There you are. It's a little cotton pads. Clearly I didn't do a great job getting them all soaked up, but you have to wait a little bit for everything to soak in. And of course, it might be a little bit hard to, you know, dip into this with one of these cotton facial pads. So you could certainly put it in a smaller bottle um, if you have a facial toner bottle already or um, buy another little one. But anyway, that is that. Thanks so much for watching. One more quick note, I just wanted to wrap up by saying I really hope that this was helpful and empowering a bit and showing you how easy it is to make these things yourself. You don't have to go spend a whole bunch of money to get a really nice quality facial toner. You can make it yourself right here for just a couple bucks with some apple cider vinegar. Um, whatever herbs you want to use, I like lavender and chamomile, they suit me well. Um, you can try and experiment with a whole bunch of different things, but it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be a lot of math or details. It's really just, oh, let's pour some in here, let's use that much, sure. You know, that's the fun of home remedies, is it's you make it your own, you do your own thing. Whatever works for you is great. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Take care. Today we're going to talk about how to make your own lavender, chamomile, and apple cider vinegar, vinegar facial toner. Vinegar. Vinegar. Be nice to say vinegar. Oh. Oh, comes the turtle kitty. The turtle kitty. She looks super happy to be here, doesn't she?